smuggling a lot of ideas into your brains into your minds it is a special technique known as depth targeting they are targeting the innermost depths of your hearts and you don't even know because our priorities have changed i often wonder about facebook and i'm use i i i'm illustrating i'm using facebook as an illustration because that's a medium which is known to all of you everyone who uses facebook goes to it on the left side you have a few things at the middle you have a few things extreme right you have one column do you have any control over what is there in the extreme right right column the answer is no almost every media company today brings th- things to your mind through back door anyone who is on facebook has to join by accepting the terms and conditions and one of the terms and conditions is that anything which facebook puts there you cannot hide it the right side column is completely taken by facebook and they put a lot of advertisements there top advertisement second one third one fourth one sometimes i've counted as many as six advertisements and what i'm surprised about is some of those advertisements are so vulgar that in my childhood in 1960s such pictures were seen only in pornographic magazines they were not available to the common man today if you surf the web if you spend an hour on facebook those pictures keep on changing those pornographic pictures keep on changing for the whole hour trying to capture your attention trying for your attention and when you are young knowingly or unknowingly our attention goes to that it is diverted to that they are planting ideas in your mi- mind using depth targeting depth targeting is a very deceptive method so what i am saying is this these media are not neutral these media are absolutely biased they are biased against bible they are biased against biblical truth they are biased against biblical righteousness principles of biblical separation can we avoid these media yes if if your whole purpose of going to facebook is to post this morning i got up this afternoon i had a nasty headache and this evening i am i feel like throwing up or i feel like vomiting if that is your sole purpose of going to facebook please stop surfing it it is going to destroy you because since you have nothing meaningful to post there and since you are not reading something meaningful therefore these advertisements that are using depth targeting and getting deep into your mind they will take over they, they will take control over you if not today then tomorrow if not tomorrow then day after tomorrow but if you are a normal person who uses it for communication and also for reading things which are written by number of our brothers post very useful things some of them are posting devotions some of them post apologetics some of them post bible studies some of them post uh, news related to prophecy developments in the world then do read it but please remember we live in times when people are unable to endure sound doctrine and therefore their attention is diverted more towards things that are not wholesome therefore don't allow those things to take hold of your mind do people oppose those who teach doctrine okay now we know that people oppose doctrine do people oppose those who teach doctrine the answer is yes galatians 4:16 am i therefore become your enemy because i tell you the truth god you saint paul to bring new testament truth and some of them were opposing saint paul so he says why are you opposing me the communicator of truth okay now here comes uh, a very important thing because we each one of us has to examine our lives in the light of that point 10 page 5.10 says uh, why do some people oppose doctrine 
why if the bible gives you only wholesome words if it builds you up if it gives you a new life if it nurtures you in your spiritual life why do some people oppose doctrine second timothy verse chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 says for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heap unto themselves teachers what is the meaning of lust lust means excessive desire we all have desires desires related to food comfort joy pleasure luxury a person who is mature he knows how to control and balance these desires all these desires are necessary the day you stop having any desire you would become an outcast from the human society we all have desires but then as mature people we have learned to balance those desires when you go for food you may see something that you love but you control yourself you know you are allergic to it or you know that there are 10 people and there are only 8 in the plate and as a mature person perhaps as the oldest person in that group you hold back allow others to take and if anything is left then only you take during exam one of your most favorite sports game or athletics might be on tv you crave to see it but still you control yourself do you why because passing the exam is much more important than satisfying your cravings but a time will come when we are unable or, or rather by choice we don't control ourselves and instead of listening to sound doctrine or listening to those people who bring sound teachings from the scripture we yield ourselves to the lusts of our our minds and once we yield ourselves to the lust of our, our minds we start opposing bible doctrine we start opposing truth and the result is terrible the result is terrible let me mention just one incident and then i'll close when i was i started going to school when i was 5 my mummy had told me always to walk with older people and never to cross the road myself we were living in chennai where my dad was studying at hindustan bible institute and even at that time madras the roads were very busy there was heavy traffic so i would always hold on to a senior's hand cross the road one day i came to the road and i thought why should i hold on to their hand i saw the road is empty the road is vacant i ran and crossed the road i could not cross even one third of the road and i was hit by a cycle bicycle i fell down as a 5 year old i did not know that i have to look to my left i have to look, look to my right i have to assess traffic i have to assess my speed and then i have to cross the road i am talking about this this happened in 1959 roads have become much more dangerous and deadly than that today but but when i mention this incident my aim is not to remind you to be careful on road but my aim is to remind you to be careful on the road of life which has become far more dangerous and deadly than what it used to be you need directions 
you need clear directions and you need to understand the directions and you need to give heed to those directions that's possible only when you give your attention to the scripture all scripture is inspired by god so that it may give you doctrine so that you are thoroughly furnished unto all good works okay god bless you thank you for listening to me carefully we will continue our studies um in the next two days meanwhile please go through the first chapter and before the first chapter there are two pages of instruction please read all of that because we gave this directory to this uh, handbook to you not for use in class alone but for your personal studies for a long time to come let's pray heavenly father we thank you and praise you for the day that you gave us we thank you for giving us a word from your scripture help us to be devoted to the holy scriptures because we ask these things in the most exalted name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen will you give instruction cnd have to go with her